Servicing the Watkins copycat come in for servicing or whatever I can do with it uh, this is the unit here uh, inside uh, it's pretty dirty uh, tape tape's broken so I've got some more tapes raise head um, close up the heads Um, all the knobs. Uh, it seems to work. Um, old mains plug and lead. Uh, foot switch. Still attached. Um, uh, the output lead. Um, okay, so uh, shaft turn is turning, it's good. Um, wheels are turning. Right, so we'll have a look inside, see what we've got before we try operating it. I've opened the copycat up and turned it over to look inside. And um, looking inside, you see the uh, circuit board. Um, and down here is a transistor. The um, transistor was on the Mark III. Uh, so this is a Mark III transistor used to provide the lower output. Um, impedance on the output lead. Now um, this has had a couple of repairs. The diode, rectified diode there, has um, failed and be replaced by a uh, normal rectified diode. Um, the capacitor on the back of the board, I shouldn't think that was original, so that must have been put in for some reason. The transformer and the motor look good. Um, three valves. There's a Mazda, uh, a Mallard and a Brema, all very high quality valves. Um, they've got a bit of foam stuff behind them some reason they must have had problems with vibration microphonics or um, something is loose anyway someone's jammed this piece of foam, foam in on the valves pull it out and just see if we can see it. the circuit board inside um, circuit be behind there hard to say if anything's been changed and I'm going to check the valves, test them before we turn it on and see um, what else I can find, uh, see if it's working. This is the Watkins copycat that I'm servicing. Looking at it, it seems to be from about 1965. Um, one thing I've noticed, it's got the optional uh, output mod that was done on um, later models uh, adding a transistor meter follower to give a low impedance output for the um, output cable so if you can use a long cable to an amp it won't pick up noise and uh, the reason why is that before this mod the output impedance was through quite a high value resistor which means um, cable can easily pick up a lot of noise and especially if it's plugged into um, a lower impedance amp it would lose a lot of high frequencies as well now I found a circuit diagram online uh, which shows um, the circuit and this uh, Watkins copycat follows the circuit very closely um, you can see the date 1965 and uh, the output mod here 
shows a transistor, an OC200, which is a PNP um, silicon transistor. And the one in this um, Watkins here is actually an AC128, which is a nice little transistor, but germanium, not quite stable. Anyway, the other components are exactly the same values as shown on the circuit diagram. And it was um, fitted here on a little tag strip which is soldered to the back of the, um, of the potentiometers to hold it in place. Now all these other components are um, original by the looks of it. Now the, the selector switch mechanism here, I've cleaned all the little sliders, there's some on the back of the selector switches and some on the front and here is focus those are the three white buttons that you can see there and they push up and down Just try and focus it a bit all the components look um, original especially uh, some are carbon compressed carbon which are quite old now some of the, there seems to be a couple of mods done on this but uh, most of the things are original so the two core this sort of yellow old yellow cable two core cable mains cable comes in there's no earth uh, a lot of equipment from before the 70s didn't have earth um, the earth was done through the connection to the amp through the um, cable uh, to prevent any hum loops. Anyway, you can add an earth if you want, but I'm leaving it as original at the moment. So the mains comes in here to this switch here, which is an on-off switch. Uh, switches the mains neutral and live. Switches it through to um, the the lamp underneath, and also then it passes to the switch here as the motor on-off switch. Now the um, mains transformer here, it's quite a nice size for such a small piece of equipment, it's original and the, um, the motor that drives the spindle that turns the tape here is original and it's got a nice um, heavy flywheel as well, though um, some people like the fluttering effect you get on these old um, tape machines so that heavy flywheel is not too important. Now we've got three valves. Uh, they could be original because uh, they're Brema and Mullard which are uh, nice old original valves. Uh, ECC 83's, two of them and um, there's the 6BR8 which is quite a nice valve because it's got um, one triode and one pentode in it, which makes it quite a useful valve, quite rare. Still get them though. Uh, the mains, the mains tag board there selects between 210 and 240 volts. Um, there's a very nice uh, bias inducted coils there, nice tall one. Uh, that's for the oscillator. Very nice. Um, the original capacitor can there. It's got three capacitors in the can. I've tested it. The capacitors all test good. Um, ignore the phone for a minute. Uh, the capacitor tests good. A lot of people want to replace these things. They say you should replace old capacitors because they wear out. Um, they can dry out and the capacitors go up and the voltage handling they go down. But this one the voltage, the capacitance test fine on all three segments which means it hasn't dried out because if it dries out the capacitance actually goes up and this hasn't gone up it's it's within the 20% tolerance on all three and it hasn't swollen no signs of problems um, it, the earth comes onto that connection there is uh, like a little star earth where all the earth join which is um, 
so convenient for wiring but also uh, good practice to have a star earth. Now um, this little block here was a diode in those days uh, diodes were quite expensive a single diode these days you'd use a bridge rectifier a single diode not great great, great practice at all because it um, only utilizes one pulse from the transformer which is waste the other pulse but this circuit because it's only three little valves and it's not a power output stage or anything so the constant the milliamp draw is constant so one diode will charge up the capacitor and there won't be any um, drain on it so the regulation will probably be very good now that diode obviously failed at some time or other and it's been replaced by um, just a single diode someone's put in there which is fine um, now the rest of the circuit it's on this old circuit board the very early Watkins were on tag board and look very nice but uh, for a cost saving putting it all onto a circuit board saves a lot of money all the component circuit is the same it's pretty um, early design you just basically drew out the wiring onto um, onto your circuit board and uh, design then it was etched out these days it's all done uh, you don't really leave big spaces everything's all um, left in because to etch off the copper costs money but dissolve it all off so you might as well dissolve the least off um, everything checks out I mean these these little capacitors here must have been they look like it's been modded I'm sure they couldn't have been done like that when it was made I don't know why it's been modded like that um, I've cleaned the pots they're a bit, a bit noisy that's all using this um, RS contact cleaner and I've also cleaned the heads, the heads are in fantastically good condition with this um, here which is uh, if you can read what it is it's um, I won't focus anyway I just put that on the cotton wool bud to clean the heads it's actually um, ethyl alcohol doesn't leave any residue so um, all the components on the other side of the board everything looks good and um, I'm going to turn it over and uh, just show you what's on the other side Okay, here's the Watkins copycat. It's an actually um, it's a Watkins one. Some of them are marked Wem, and this one um, seems to be about from 1965. Uh, still got the original knobs, um, switches, and um, switches here. Three of them. Each one selects one of these heads. Now. Um, Around here, you've got a permanent strong magnet, which erases the tape because it as it goes across it. Comes around these uh, pulleys. Now this is spring loaded. It's still got the spring inside, so that's good. Now these heads um, are in very good condition. I've cleaned them up. It's hard to see, but that's the um, record head there. Then we've got one, two three replay heads a little guide there and then you've got the uh, spindle coming up from the motor that's got that control uh, pulls the tape round now um, you can still get these tapes quite easily or you can make your own I've got a tape uh, ready to go here that I've got to um, fit onto the machine and um, if you just have a quick look in the back of these these heads, I don't know if you can see they are original. Um, they've all got a little pink dot on the back, which must mean something. Maybe they were selected. 
cables are all original as well. So old yellow cable mains, um, the output cable, and uh, the foot switch, which is uh, which is a bit uh, worse for wear, but it still works. Anyway, I'm going to put the tape onto the machine and um, get it working. Uh, see if we can demo it. Okay, I've put the tape on the machine. Um, as you can see, I'll just show you, it wraps around the spindle uh, under that guide to make sure it travels across the heads nicely. Uh, then on this side it's got uh, two rollers and the magnet it passes closely over the top of the magnet to erase that red magnet this there, a strong magnet. And then you've got the record head there. Um, you've got uh, the motor switch here will turn on the spindle over here and uh, if I turn it on now it spins up the tape starts going around at that speed the little white mark is where the tape's obviously joined uh, and um, There's a bit of noise from the motor, but obviously uh, you wouldn't hear that in a normal environment. And uh, you could leave it uh, running all night, but generally um, the tape will wear out. Uh, so if you're not going to use it in brake or something, you just turn off the the motor and let it stop. So I'm going to uh, connect it up and see what it sounds like. <laughs> 